Hey guys, this is David, the Chess Nerd Bird, here with another video. So it's been a little while. I've been a little busy with um, with schoolwork and work and family, so I haven't had a chance to really publish any videos or any uh, new blog posts. So I'm um, gonna try to get back into it. I can't promise that I will be doing it as consistently as I would like. Um, but I will try to make more of an effort to do more videos. Um, so right now, I'm actually just going to get back into some tactics training. I actually did some the other day. Um, didn't make a video on it, but I did some the other day and got my rating up to uh, 1548 on tactics. And so I'm just going to do a couple more uh, problems today. And then um, tonight, I'm going to be recording, doing a live stream, playing on chess.com. So if you're watching this now, um, at 11 o'clock tonight, I will start a live stream uh, right around 11 o'clock, maybe on the dot, maybe a few minutes after. But nonetheless, I will be on chess.com around 11 o'clock tonight and doing a live stream. So if you feel brave enough to challenge me or if you just want to pummel me, if you're that much better than me, then feel free to jump on chess.com and, and challenge me to a fight. Um, I'm going to do five minutes and or three, two. So um, I'll let you pick the time control when you challenge me and hopefully we'll have fun. So here we go, I'm gonna do some tactics, <clears throat> get back into the habit of solving these. Um, so right now we are playing with the black pieces. And I gotta try to figure out what is going on here. Is black going for a draw? Is black going for a win? Um, black's only got really one good check that makes sense. Which is queen c7 check. But after the king moves, I don't have anywhere else to go. Oh wait, I could play queen f4 check and then um, looks like my a-pawn is going to would win a race, I believe. Let me just make sure. So queen f4, queen takes f4, g takes f4, and then g5. And I could put a4. And if he plays g6, then I just move my king over. And my king can stop that pawn, but his king can't stop my pawn. So I believe that is going to be the correct answer. All right, so one right. Let's keep going. Alright, so immediately I'm looking at queen takes e6 check. And obviously if queen f7 blocks, then queen takes f7 check, king h8, and then queen takes f8, which is checkmate. And so after queen takes e6, the only other option for black would be to play king h8. And then after knight to f7 check, um, the only way to stop mate is to give up the queen. So queen takes f7, queen takes f7. Um, and you're still dealing with the queen takes f8 threat. Um, so anyway, so after queen takes e6, king h8, knight f7 check, you have king g8, and then you have knight h6, knight h6, double check. So again, the king has to move back to h8, and then you have queen g8, which is checkmate. And so in this, black just gives up the queen. All right, so playing white in this one as well with the queen and pawn in games. So it seems like chess.com wants me to work on queen and pawn in games. Let's see here. Um, all right, so my king is is basically stuck between h1 and h2, so 
um, no major like threats for checkmating me right away. So, <clears throat> uh, material count white is up a pawn, but how to take advantage of that is going to be the question. And first of all, is white winning this king and pawn endgame, even though he's up a pawn? Um, that's a that's a tidbit of wisdom that I got from um, somebody. I'm not I'm not sure, but it's if you if you're not sure if you're winning the king and pawn endgame, don't go into the king and pawn endgame because once you're there, you either will win or you'll probably lose or, or draw. And so, if your pieces on the board are helping you win, then you don't want to trade off the pieces to get to a, a losing or drawing king and pawn endgame. So, um, not saying I know all the king and pawn endgames, but just a, a little nugget of, of information that I picked up. Um, again, I, I can't remember if it was a book, a video, a, a person. Um, I'm sure it was a person, but I don't know if it was it was it was somebody someone I knew. Um, but anyway, back to the back to the puzzle here. Um, so anyway, so just my thoughts out loud. So the first move I'm looking at is queen f7 check because it's a check. Um, but then black has three moves, and that just doesn't seem as forcing as I would like it to be. But I don't know if it needs to be. that forcing like I really I just want to push that D pawn because it's a it's a past pawn like I just want to push the D pawn but um there maybe I should play queen f7 check first and I mean, if you were to play queen g7, then I guess I have queen takes h5 check, and um, I mean, I just gain another pawn, and that can't be all that bad. If he moves his king one way or the other, then I can still just play d6. And the reason that I'm playing queen f7 with, with that idea of that I want to play d6 is because of the queen... Um, the queen f4 check and then it picks up the c pawn and, and my pawns start to fall and so queen f7 prevents black from playing queen f4 and I think that's the I think that's the right idea I mean I just don't I don't I don't know enough about you know queen and, and pawn end games you know I know if the queens weren't on the board right now um, I could just push the d pawn and, and that would win or no it would not no, I'm just kidding. Yes, I could I could push the D pawn, yes. If it was black's move with just the king and pawns, then then black can stop that pawn. But with white to move on, on D6, playing D6 right away, then then black loses that, that king and pawn in game. Um and so Queen of Seven stops Queen of Four check and then that really stops the Black Queen from really really actually ever getting into that side of the board so I think that's right and so now if I were to trade Queen takes g7 King takes g7 and d6 now black can stop that pawn so but I also think I'm winning this in game because black can't guard these two pawns. So if he tries to go after, like if I were to push d6 and he tries to go after that pawn, I can gobble up the h pawn and and um, and win from there. So is that enough? If I trade queens and get into the king and pawn game, is that winning? 
or is there something else that I'm missing? Is the question here. Should I just take queen takes um, h5? Check. I mean, now I'm up two pawns. I just want another pawn. And that can't be can't be all that bad. I don't know if it's the most. necessarily correct way to win that or if there's a better way And these are these are over the board decisions that that I notice I I struggle with is do I just go ahead and simplify into this king and pawn in game that I believe is winning because of this pass pawn on on d5. That is what makes this king and pawn in game winning right now for white is that pass pawn. Um, If the black king ever gets too far away, then then that guy's that guy's going. I think that's it. I mean, I can take this pawn, but what does that get me? That leaves him with the queen on the board, and just it starts to give him chances, I believe. And that's 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 my my thinking. I don't know if that's if that's right. And and I'm I'm taking all this time right now because I'm trying to to force myself to to see these lines. So if queen takes h5 check, I mean, it's just, he could play queen h6 or king, you know, um, g8. I mean, if he plays queen h6, then you just, you just take it. You just take it and then push the, the d5 pawn, so, so he's not going to play that. Yeah, and see, see, I would just trade into the 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 end game here, but I don't know why. I don't know what the move is. Maybe it's just to take the pawn, just to take the extra pawn. And that's that's something that I think I just need to. I, I just need to work on that because I would have just gone into the king and pawn game because of the the pawn there, but maybe that's not. You know, maybe there's more to that position, but it just looks like that would be. That would just be enough, so. But that's probably why I'm still seventeen hundred, so. And why I need to continue to to practice and and get better. All right. So new position here, playing black. With the black pieces. Um, what in the world is going on here? I mean, just right away, Bishop B three looks very promising. There's no way for white to guard that knight and or attack something of more value. I mean, they've got to get their queen to safety, and they don't have a good way to do that. So, bishop b3.
Okay, and I'm just looking to make sure there's no forks between the king and queen. You know, something better than just bishop takes, but I believe bishop takes a4 is the best move. All right, so queen takes a2. So this is always a, a good one here, and it is going to lead to black's um, checkmate. So if you can visualize this, queen d8 check, forced move is king takes d8, and then bishop a5, which is a double check, which forces um, black's king to move because he's in check by both the bishop on a5 and the rook on d1. So he can go either king c8 or king e8. Either way, the rook d8 next move will be completely checkmated just like that okay so another one of these positions that have been giving me problems So black has a rook, a bishop, and a pawn for my queen. Is white trying to win this? Or is he trying to draw? Because I, I don't think, I mean, numbers wise, it you know adds up if you, you look at the, you know, rooks are worth five, bishops are worth three, and pawns are worth one. So 5, 3, 1 is 9, and the queen is technically worth 9 pawns. Then it should be, technically, this is even position, but... Um, so if I just play queen h5 check after king g8... I mean, I can just I can have the perpetual if I want it. Um, I could play g6, but I'm not really threatening anything with g6, am I? I mean, it's not like I'm really going to play. It's not like I'm really going to checkmate him, right? I mean, g6. Then let's say it was my move: queen h7, king f8, queen h8. I can't take that pawn because of the. Yeah, I think it's just. I think this is just a draw. So. All right. So. White is attacking my queen. I'm up a bishop. My rook on e6 is pinned, so I cannot play in the game right now. And my queen is almost trapped. I have one square that queen can go to where it won't be captured. Oh, I see, but if my queen moves off the that, then the rook can come down. Down to d8 check. Hmm. So what is going on? is the question. Mm. 
Alright, so, I mean, Queen E2, it just doesn't seem... good enough. That just, it can't be enough. There's got to be more to this story than just that. I mean, I could take the rook, but and then say I have a bishop and a rook for the queen. It just I don't I can't see that being enough. It just can't be, it can't be enough. Where am I, what am I missing? Either queen e2 or queen takes d1 are the moves that I'm considering. As I'm already up with bishop. But if I take the rook, you know, a rook and a bishop is only worth, you know, eight. And I just gave up a queen worth nine. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't go by those point values, but for those that don't play chess, that's why I, I use those. Or if you're a beginner, I, I use those just to kind of help reference the, you know, those numbers. But, um, you know, I, I look at the position, and even though, like, yes, I'm, I'm up a rook and a bishop, like, you know, I can't. I can't move one of my rooks. My other rook's still in the corner. My light squared bishop, you know, doesn't really have a home to go to right now, and it's defending the bishop on e6 that can't move. So even though I'm up material, like it just it doesn't feel like I'm up material because so many pieces are just I mean everything's just scattered around. Um I think just queen e2, and then you know if he moves his other rook over. But after queen e2, rook d8, king up, and the other rook over. Holy smokes, that's going to be not good. Not good. I just I don't see any other any other options here. Alright, I think I'm just going to go with queen e2, and if that's wrong, then it's wrong. No, he plays this move. Now, I was looking at either bishop f8 in response to this, but that just depends on another piece. Um, oh, I can't play that move. I can't play that. If I play bishop f8, then he just plays rook takes c8, after rook takes c8, um, 
Then you just play your queen takes e6 check, and that's that's no good. That's no good at all. Yeah. So I have to play there. Um, if you if you couldn't follow that, what I just said, um, if I were to play bishop f8, he could play rook takes c8, because um, that removes the defender of the uh, rook on e6. And after I play rook takes c8, then he plays queen takes e6 check which checks my king on g8 and the rook on c8, so he actually um, would win back material and then some. So, All right, guys. Well, that is all the tactics training I'm going to do today, at least for this video. So got up to 1574, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Um, hope you had fun watching me or making fun of me trying to solve these uh, kind of average problems, but anyway, until next time, um, if you like what you saw, like, like the video, share it, subscribe, all those fun things. Again, thanks for watching, and have a good day.